I was just counting the number of bags that I had and I was really proud of myself for downsizing. Not that it is my ultimate goal or anything, but I just feel like every single bag has its purpose and I rotate them enough. So it is that time of the year where we do a roundup of my entire handbag collection. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Amy. I feel like my collection has changed quite a bit this year. Obviously, because I got into Hermes this past two years. The way I've decided to rank it is to present to you my teeny tiniest bags or the ones that are the least practical. And then we'll move up from that to the mini size, small size, and then the medium size, and then the large size bag. So let's get started with the tiniest, tiniest one that I have. I wouldn't say that this one is the most impractical because I actually find this nano bag very, very practical. You guys probably have seen me talk about this bag so much. I love the concept of double bagging. Essentially, this is one of my best, best little impractical bag for most people, but for me, it's still, I still love, love, love this so much. And I don't think this will ever leave my collection, to be honest. I'm also gonna try my best to tell you the season of which I bought these. I may or may not remember them correctly for some of them, but I'll try my best. This version is the one with the magnetic closure and it's all lambskin with a one compartment sort of um, space and it's really, really convenient. It has this cute top handle. If you bought the earlier original edition of this, then it would only have the uh, snap button closure, not the magnetic closure. Actually, that was 21A. This one is 21K, I believe. If you don't see something that I used to have, then obviously they have left my collection and has found a better home. Moving on to my next and probably my only other impractical bag because every other bag are more or less still quite practical even if they're still very very small this one because of the size and because you can't fit a phone this one you can fit a phone but it's the shape the shape is very impractical it's a zippered opening which is not the easiest and because it's such a weird shape you do have to sort of angle your things at a you know kind of random order to make it work so that you can close it it has a working sort of slip pocket in the front it's still quite spacious in front so you can still put some things in there there is the mona lisa pocket in the back very very classic it is in this gorgeous heart shape with a heart zipper and it opens like so classic burgundy color it has two slip pockets on each side um, actually it's not leather line it's fabric line but the two pockets are in leather material and yeah that is the bag so it's really just that novelty aspect of it that I was really attracted to. It's all lambskin, so it's not the most practical material either, but it's just so gorgeous. And it's just one of those occasional bags that I would uh, just wear here and there. I would say that the rest of my collection are considered more or less classics with a twist. They are more user-friendly and they definitely will stand the test of time. And that is exactly what I love about Ideal Jewelry. So this portion of the video is kindly sponsored by Ideal. Ideal is a diamond jewelry company and I've spoken about them a few times and I'm sure you have heard about them. But if you haven't, Ideal is a sustainable fine jewelry company. They create all of their jewelry with lab-grown diamonds, conflict-free solid 14 karat gold, and all of their designs are interchangeable and modular by design. What does that mean? On my left ear, I'm wearing three of their pieces. Yes, three. So I have the main diamond stud, and then I also have the live diamond add-on, and right here, I also have the Billy add-on as well. So this whole side here is actually 
three components. It is so wonderful that you're able to mix and match and be super creative. You can obviously just wear the stud alone. You can also wear the stud with one add-on or two add-ons. This has got to be my favorite combination so far. Multi stones and this just has such an impact. It's Again, it's like a classic piece, but with a twist, and it will never go out of style because it's diamonds and it's real gold. By the way, these pendant add-ons, the ones that dangle, can also be transformed into a lariat necklace, which is so, so versatile. On this other side, I have their very, very popular Lucia add-on. I also had a question from you guys, so very, very quickly, I just wanted to talk about um, stacking my necklaces. How I am able to stack three necklaces and wear them 24-7 without them getting tangled. Yes, I wear them 24-7. I never remove. This is my permanent stack on my neck, by the way. This one is the Lina, the one on top. It's just got that really, really nice sort of smiley bar of diamonds and it's just so gorgeous. I have it in rose gold. I have here the jean pendant on the longest setting and it is in white gold. This one is the shortest setting on the Lena. And yeah, I sleep like this and everything and they do get tangled. But one trick I have for you, which you will never have to spend hours detangling them every morning. I guarantee it, that's what I do and it's always worked. Every morning when you wake up, most likely all your pendants are on the back side of you and all you see is like the back side of the chain in front. No worries, just bend over let gravity do its job. Just bend over, let all the pendants come back to the front. You don't even need to do it yourself. Just let the, the chains kind of, all the pendants come back to the front. And it will almost be already in its place. And all you need to do is just maybe grab the shortest one and just lift it. Lift it and then just make sure the chain is not touching the other one. Once the shortest one is detangled from the other two, you can do the same thing with the middle one and the longest one. The only thing that I might need to kind of fix is just the, you know, how like the clasp could be in front and I just move it to the back and that is it. I just do it once a day and it's always, always works. So if you are into stacking necklaces or earrings, I highly recommend Ideal Jewelry. They are so great. Another tip I have for you is to sign up to their newsletter because they have surprise launches. Last month, they had a limited launch of their brace, modular bracelets, and it's just so gorgeous. November, December is the time where a lot of places have promotions and surprises. So make sure to always check the links down below for the most updated promotions. Of course, you can use my coupon code to save at checkout. But like I said, they will have different promotions throughout the next little while. So always make sure to check the links. And if they already have a better promotion on their site, then the coupon code will not work. When they ship you your jewelry, it comes in this box. And they also ship you a few of their free goodies. So this time I got this nice pouch and a nice little hair tie. I'll have everything linked down below. So make sure to check out their website. And yeah, have fun shopping. Okay, the next handbag that I wanted to feature is this one. This is my newest edition. If you have missed it, I will link my unboxing video right here. So yeah, this one is my newest handbag in my collection. It is the Coco Handle from 22K. This collection, there's two greens. There's this lighter green and the more darker khaki green. This green almost has sort of that yellow tint to it, especially when you wear it outside with the sunlight. It's so gorgeous and it's so unusual, but um, it's ranked number three because it's one of my least practical bag in a sense that it's very, very small because um, if you watch my review, you will see that it doesn't fit a whole lot for this size bag, but it's so dang cute. I love the feature of the handle on the Coco handle. That's probably the most prominent uh, feature of this bag. And of course, with the mini size, you get the extra long chain strap, which is really, really nice. So yeah, 
my extra mini coco handle from 22k okay, the next two handbags fit more or less about the same amount and they're not chanel this time so yeah let's talk about the nano speedy this is my lv nano speedy and this is the new edition the 2022 nano speedy edition it comes not with this little tag here this is my own luggage tag so it does not come with it but I got this little luggage tag stamped in Singapore when I visited Singapore in 2018 and I just leave it on this bag because it goes so well together but otherwise it just looks like this and it has d-rings for the detachable strap so this bag what's different from this version of the nano and the old version is that the strap is detachable and all of the trims are kind of that oversized. The handle chaps are oversized, the zipper pull is oversized, the detachable strap is oversized, uh, except the bag is actually a little smaller, <laughs> which kind of makes it kind of that juxtaposed design. It's super cute and obviously very trendy. Um, so yeah, this fits believe it or not it fits more than the i i i think it fits more than uh, the extra mini coco handle just because it's slightly easier to to put bulkier things in here versus that one the nano speedy and the lady dior mini size are very very comparable because the lady dior actually fits quite a bit it's just a little impractical to get in and out because of this whole situation here where you have to get over the flap it's got these d-rings here to to kind of like get in the way of your hands and everything but otherwise this bag is such a classic it's uh one of my colored bags and as you can see my collection you you've seen a couple of black bags but i honestly have mostly black bags rather than colored bags now which is kind of sad i have to start adding more colors but yes this is still one of my colored bags sort of which is still very neutral this is the pearlescent really beautiful pearlescent silver gray and it's just gorgeous in this beautiful supple lambskin very durable lambskin even for this lighter color i'm not afraid to wear this it's got a few um fingerprints and scratches i need to buff these out but um it doesn't bother me because you are supposed to remove all the stickers otherwise they will melt and stick onto your hardware over time so remove all your sticker guys um, but yeah this is one of my favorite bags i think um, if you have sort of that core collection and you can start adding the fancier bags definitely add a lady dior because they are really really amazing and they make great evening bags the bulk of my collection are chanel bags of course which is why you'll see a lot of chanel on this channel so the next bag that um is a decent it's, it's a slightly more decent size and also a lot more practical to get in and out because of this large opening is this very coveted classic caviar square mini this one is from i think it's 17c so it's a while ago um but it's one of my favorites i love 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 this bag it's never going anywhere i don't use it as much because i have so many mini bags to rotate but the mini caviar square mini is just i mean it just you can never go wrong with it it's just so dang cute it's a good size um this particular season i find that i was able to fit my max phone at the time anyway i had a nexus 6 and i had also the iphone 10s max they both fit in this phone i haven't tried the 13 max or anything like that because i don't own those phones i currently now have the mini 13 so this one um i will say for a mini square is a very versatile size it's just that that particular season because as you all know these are you know in my eyes they're still sort of considered classics with a twist because they're not considered real classics they are still seasonal but every season they kind of change up the leather they change up the size a little bit even the shape a little bit and i will say the 17c is one of the best ones uh, that i've gotten my hands on it's one of my favorite bags for 
a very, very good reason. And this one I've traveled with the most. After this one, the next most practical or size-wise and all is the Rectangle Mini, of course. So this one is from 18... I want to say 18B. Again, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry, but it's approximate. Uh, so I bought this one the following year. And it's this gorgeous raspberry pink or raspberry red color. It's also in caviar. It's one of the last seasons, if not the actual last season, that they um, still did a caviar leather on their classic rectangle minis or square minis. And it's just so gorgeous. I love this one so much. Again, this one is super practical because this will fit a Max phone for sure because of the length. Um, again, with minis, the chain, everything, the size, they're very practical for me as a mini bag. The next one is a more recent addition to my collection. This is from the 21S collection, but I just got it this year. I bought a pre-loved from a fellow YouTuber friend, and I'm just so happy that I finally got my hands on a top handle version of the Rectangle Mini. This one also is in caviar. They have since only been doing lambskin so far. And again, these are seasonal. They don't come out every single season. So I'm very glad that I got at least one. Um, it's in black, so unfortunately, um, you know, I, I would love to have gotten this in a white, ivory, gold, silver, whatnot, but black is always a good idea. It's very, very classic and will go with everything, of course, um, but I do have a lot of black bags. I am lacking a few colors. In any case, this is definitely uh, very, very coveted and one of my probably forever piece as well just like this rectangular mini. They are very similar size. I think this one just kind of feels fits a bit more because it doesn't have any chains underneath. Uh, so it's got a little bit more space from kind of that top flap. Uh, there's nothing getting in the way, whereas this one sort of has that chain going through it, right? Um, so I feel like this sort of fits maybe just like a like a tiny tiny little bit less than this version but they're very similar more chanel i hope you're not bored of my chanel bags uh the next larger size this is the small size classic flap it's the same collection when the little nano bags came out the first time with the snap button closure pretty sure pretty sure it is if i'm wrong i'm so sorry but this is the beautiful dove gray uh, classic flap from back then I I was resisting getting a classic flap for the longest time because of the price but also after hearing that they were gonna do a very huge jump especially during this collection I decided that I needed to get my hands on it ASAP and especially because I was really really into this color Clearly, this is a holy grail unicorn color. It's this perfect shade of gray, light gray that is so kind of like a chameleon as well because under the sunlight, it looks white and small. It's just the perfect size. It's just so beautiful. This color and this size is wonderful. It's only a little bit bigger than the rectangle mini, but Regardless, it's a classic and at least I have one now. I'm really glad that it's not black as well. I would have loved the black, but I think the gray is just extra special. All my larger size bags, the ones that are a little bit more practical and versatile are all in black color. So that is why I'm really glad that this one isn't. Which number is this one now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is number nine. So we're almost, I won't tell you, still have two bags that are not black. Although the other one is monogram, so I wouldn't even consider that to be color. It's just such a neutral canvas and it's not leather. So this is probably the last one that I have that is not black. And this is the Hermes Della Cavalleria 
crossbody bag and it's in the color gold which is just the name that they use for the color tan it's gorgeous it's an epsom leather palladium hardware and i would say this is probably the next most practical one um at, at this point all my bags are very practical there are they're just like that great size where even if you still have to downsize you will be able to get away with a lot like everything that you possibly me possibly need and so same with this one this one really fits a ton uh, it's one large compartment a secret compartment in the back i haven't done a full-on um, review on this one yet I don't know if you guys are even interested if you really want me to do a more in-depth review if I get enough requests I will consider doing it um, but in any case I I've had this bag for less than a year so um, usually I try to wait around closer to a year unless I've been really really using the bag a ton then I would do a more in-depth review right away uh, but in any case, this bag is, again, it's, just, it's a great, this is a great, great handbag. I do highly recommend it. It's got pros and cons. Every single bag has. Uh, but a great travel size, um, a great design, really well made, uh, fairly okay price for what it is. It's not really a classic, but it can sort of be a classic. I think this is a very classic shape. To me, it's... To me, it has a lot of classic components to it, so I'm really pleased with this bag so far. Up next, we have two bags that are very similar in size again. Uh, totally different bags, of course, but they fit more or less the same in terms of amount. So uh, let's show this one first. This is another LV bag that I own. This is really old uh, or Kind of older in my collection this is not my oldest lv bag but it is one of the ones that i really really enjoy and i'm so glad i still have it uh, i never even considered parting with this one because it's so practical this is sort of that um nice you know lux luxurious material uh nice handbag that is really under the radar because um, the monogram on this is embossed and it's not super noticeable um, you can literally just grab and go this is basically my grab and go very close to the body LV bag I've talked about it so much this is the LV twice by the way and um, yeah I got this I don't even remember I think it was 2016 uh, it's microfiber line it's got several different compartments um, it's really really roomy and it's really practical so I'm really really happy about this bag and at these price ranges even though back then I still think that this was considered expensive but nowadays you cannot even get this kind of full leather bag at LV anymore at these prices and this well made and this practical this design too so yeah they really well done job and I'll just have to link some of the pre-loved ones because obviously they don't make this anymore. A Chanel bag that is so super controversial because there was a lot of, a lot of love and hate, um, a lot of sort of people who talk about what it looks like. Um, nowadays, there's a rumor about it discontinuing. Uh, in any case, it's the Gabrielle handbag in the small size hobo and I love it. I still have it. Of course, I don't wear it a ton anymore. I used to, but again, I do have more than enough bags to rotate. But this is such a great, it's such a great, um, tr not trendy, but like it sort of has that component of grunge. Uh, it's cool. It's sort of like that very different design that chanel makes because chanel is very much a flat bag type of design most of the time but this is probably their most different iconic releases that they've ever made uh, for a long time it was still considered their permanent style now i'm not so sure anymore because again they're talking about discontinuing this bag they're still selling it though but i don't know for how long that is the only thing it's got a really nice generous 
large compartment. But yeah, this is sort of that, um, you know, kind of not so classic, classic with a twist type of handbag in my collection. It's probably one of my most unique um, bags from Chanel because every other bag is practically a flat bag aside from the hard bag, right? So yeah, the Gabrielle Chanel in black color. My next bag is another Chanel. This is a seasonal... Um, I honestly forget the season now. 19B? Something like that. It's pre-pandemic and it's this gorgeous bucket style handbag. It's got this nice sort of um, chain um, drawstring, seasonal caviar. It's got this sort of plush feeling about it. It's a little bit more matte than other caviars that I have, say the 17C and even the 21 uh, 21S are a little bit more shiny. This one is slightly more matte, which is really, which is really gorgeous too. Uh, it's got four feet, crossbody strap as well that is already attached to the bag, and of course the top handle. So it's a really great design for a bucket bag. Chanel doesn't make it like that anymore, I feel. Not at these price ranges too, even though I did have to pay a premium for this because I bought it uh, from a reseller. This is the Chanel 19 in the small size, and it's one of my favorite absolutely one of my favorite i kind of didn't use it throughout the summer and then all of a sudden the other week we were going on a road trip to the states and i just felt like i needed a bag that i can get in and out really easily but i didn't want to have to like be so babying it or anything like because i was on a road trip right I, I just needed to be able to get into my bag quickly but still fit a good amount so i grabbed this and i was just so happy about it because it's so easy like this is probably one of the easiest bag to get in and out of it's got good space um you know depending on the season that you get it will come in a different um luscious leather this is a lambskin from 20c i want to say i think this was from 20c i got it really early on uh, but not the first season i will say also over time uh, this part of the strap the shoulder strap has softened up a little bit it's kind of more molded to my shoulders and it is definitely a lot more comfortable to wear already um, because a lot of you are concerned about the weight and the fact that this is sort of like kind of that clunky, thick leather, kind of really hard, it will get better. <laughs> so after a couple years, it's gotten a lot better and I, I do really enjoy it. I love the fact that it has these two straps. This one in particular, this top handle is a winner. It's got that large back pocket. I still really think that they did such a great job, both Virginie and Carl, when they collabed and did this bag. Uh, this is a strong, strong handbag that is not only very nice and plush to touch and to handle, but it's so super versatile, way more versatile than the classic flap will ever be. And it's just it's just a big winner in my books. My one and only Hermes Birkin 25 in rose gold black togo and it's just so gorgeous. I cannot get enough of this bag. It's the perfect first Birkin for me. Um, I love it in this combination even though I still you know, I now I wish to have a Birkin in a lighter color, but this is still still the best and most perfect number one uh, first Birkin or quarterback that I could ever ask for. So I'm really, really, really glad that I got this. At times, I was able to put my very small bottle of water inside. You know, a bottle that I was already drinking, so it's not like it was going to weigh down the bag that much anyway. My most prized possession for sure for 2022. The next one would be the Hermes Picotin 18. And I, I do think that this fits more than the Birkin 25. It's a totally different bag. This is a non-quarter bag. And it is the smallest of the picotin size, picotin size. 
um, but it it fits a lot because it's essentially just a bucket style right and literally everything at a glance so easy to get in and out i was just using it earlier hence my coin purse was still there i went to grab groceries it's just such an easy bag but it's such an elegant bag as well oh by the way mine is in the touch version which is why the handles stick upright i love that about it definitely worth the extra little bit but yes, it is in black. As you saw, all my other bags are in black color. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I love this bag. This one is in the Palladium hardware and it's just gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous bag. Between this one and the Chanel bucket bag, I think this one actually fits more because it really is, if you like open it up like this, it's kind of like a little cube it's really much more spacious than the Chanel bucket I think the Chanel bucket has more sort of padding it has a drawstring on top so it's a little bit more constricting this one really like if, if you really need to fill it you can fill it <laughs> so yeah I love this I love 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 this bag I would love to get another one of these in a different color in a lighter color <laughs> we were down to my large size bags or at least those are my large size bags for you maybe it's still not that large my only Celine bag and here we have it the Celine trapeze this was um the old small size I don't know how they call it anymore but they don't make this size anymore and they don't make this bag anymore actually um, so yeah this is an oldie but a goodie because I feel like this bag it's so unfortunate because it's one of their nicest designs it is the perfect blogger bag um, for what the size is it's not so heavy of course it's got weight because it's really all leather it's literally leather inside outside it's leather line everything so it's got material it's got hardware it's got a good strap it's got a big zipper everything is super super substantial um but it doesn't retain its value and that's unfortunate it's not the most practical design probably because in order to get in the bag you've got the zipper you've got the clasp you've got um so much to open if you really want to get in i get around this by just going through the sides because again it's a good thing to have small hands and small arms I can literally get in the bag like this and just grab whatever I need on the side so unless I have a bigger item then I need to open the bag it's a multi-step thing to open get in and everything in this bag so I can I can understand why it's um, it's kind of not the bag that will ever retain value for that reason which is very unfortunate because Celine is great at designing um, bags that are kind of under the radar not so much anymore but um, at least back then I, I really like their design they're very simple very minimal next we have a classic and it's one of my largest bags it's my largest bag actually <laughs> and it is the very a very oldie but goodie never full mm size in the monogram canvas and the untreated vashara leather mine is from circa 2015 i think and i chose the one in the red lining i think that was the year that they started doing different lining colors because the very first version is all just beige um, so yeah, this is an old, <laughs> it's my oldest bag and the patina is just great on this. I love, I love a good patina. I'm definitely in a really good place in terms of the style of the bags that I have and also for not repeating so much because as you know, if you follow me, I kind of have this problem of repeating styles of bags and buying them in different colors i kind of eliminated that problem i think the closest that i have right now that are very similar 
are my uh, rectangle minis but this one is the classic one and the other one is the top handle one so for me they are very different my most interesting and fun bags are these two obviously they're more novelty so it's not for everyone but yeah let me know which one is your favorite are you surprised that i downsized this much or are you surprised at what is left in my collection it takes a lot of effort and time to film this so i hope you really appreciated it give me a like if you did and of course don't forget to check out ideal jewelry trust me you're not going to regret getting their pieces especially if you're into earrings i only have one piercing i'm so happy that they are modular by design because that way i get to wear multiple earrings in my one ear hole which is so cool because that's the only way that i get to have sort of more of a stack on my ears because i am not one of those people that have multiple ear holes where they can wear multiple ones that is so cool but i can't do it and i kind of have sensitive ears too so i'm also really happy that these are fine gold and real lab grown diamonds which is so sustainable and much more price friendly necklace wise these are my current favorite i kind of have my eye on another pendant i think it will stack really well as the last pendant here i think if i ever change up my stack on my neck it will be the last one the longest one i can change up the last little pendant here and there from time to time just to spice it up but yeah the lena is my permanent is always going to be on my neck i will for sure be bringing this to my trip because on a date night i can wear both or just the billy and also sometimes I can change into a, the lariat necklace depending on the top that I'm wearing um, but otherwise I could just wear the live with the stud and it's just that classic everyday but more than just a stud kind of design on the ears it just looks like there's something crawling onto my ears it's just so gorgeous and it's super comfortable too thank you so much for watching if you're brand new to my channel don't forget to subscribe i would love to have you here and of course if you would like to you can join my channel membership that way you get all the exclusive live streams that me and kat do anyway thanks so much have a great day and i'll talk to you guys again very soon bye